Bernadette Nicole, aged 9. Carol Ann Nicole, aged 4. Damien Harkin, aged 8. Gary Gormley, aged 3. Manus Deary, aged 15. Annette McGavigan, aged 14. Joseph Connolly, aged 15. Catherine Aiken, aged 8. William Temple, aged 16. James O'Hagan, Jared Doherty, Daniel Hegarty, aged 14. Tony Diamond, aged 12. Gordon Golliger, aged 9. Brian Coyle, aged 16. John McDade, aged 16. Kathleen Feeney, aged 16. Michael Meenan, aged 16. Paul Waters, aged 15. Stephen McConaughey, aged 11. And Charles Lowe, aged 16. Um, and then Vic Bishop, John McEwen, at this point. Thank you very much. I didn't see it, but I believe last night was the final episode of the Dirty Girls. And we know what Dirty Girls could be like. So about a couple of months ago, three former Dirty Girls, with all due respect, came along to me and said, we're going to have a wee thing for the forgotten children, the lost children. Um, would you come down and stand with us? So I'm only too happy to be here this evening. Um, it has been the mighty woman of Derry who have done so much quietly in the background to see this city through difficult years. And in many ways it's great that the, the, the three women, Helen, Mary and Margaret, yeah, who have done so much work to make this beautiful garden, just in the heart of the community, unobtrusive, not angry at anybody, not giving off to anybody, not feeling about anybody, just saying, we want to have a public place here. When we have they were 20 children, 22 children. For whatever reason, nobody's saying they were to blame or that was to blame or somebody else was to blame. Just their children whose lives were snuffed out. We want to tell a story about this that remembers them with love. Because if we can remember the past and forgive the past, we can move forward. And that probably is the best tribute to those whom we've lost. I know we've lost so many of all ages, but particularly children who have no part to play in any conflict. I want to say thanks to Mary and Helen and Margaret for the work they put together and making this a beautiful place here. I want to thank all of you for coming along this evening. I can just have a maybe a minute silence to remember those who died. Last that they be at peace and that we can be at peace with their passing. Grant unto them, O Lord, and that perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace in their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed. Through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Thank you very much. Amen. The man that doesn't need an introduction. Here we are. I mean, the occasion doesn't really require anything much from me. I think it, it was all said, really, by Bishop Donald and uh, uh, by Helen, reading out the names, in fact, reading out the names of the children killed in this area in the Troubles. That in itself says all, really, that we need to say. It's a litany of sadness and grief and loss visited upon the entire uh, community. And if there's one thing we can do of a practical nature now is to resolve within ourselves that the children of the future are not going to be subjected to the cruelty and violence that the children of the past in this area and elsewhere in Ireland were subjected to. The 40 children in this area killed, there was 138 children under the age of 16 have died in the course of the Troubles. 138 under 16. Children, children, 
died uh, in the troubles. When you get to my age, you know, I'm even older than a bishop. <laughs> and, uh, when you get to my age, sort of almost everybody seems like a young one. And in particular, when I think of 15 and 16 year olds, almost as babies, that they haven't emerged into the world at all. They haven't been given a chance to live. You know, it's a, a, I think sort of from 16 to now, I think of all the things that I have done, some of them good, some of them bad, and none of them particularly heroic. But I got to do an awful lot of things. I got to do an awful lot of things that children who have been cut down in our troubles don't get to do and haven't got to do. That's such a huge loss to our community, such a huge loss to their families, such an ocean of grief to deluge all their loved ones. And for what? For what? For what cause? No cause can justify the death of children. These weren't competence, they weren't people sort of marching out, I mean, to uh, pursue a cause by violent means, whether we accept that or not. They were not involved. There's no heroic narrative that includes these children because there was nothing heroic about the way they died or the people who killed them. Nothing heroic about it at all. It was mundane, or everyday things, like 16 year olds, a red manus, and a bag of chips in his hand, bought from the Scooby-Doo down there, long gone now, but many of you uh, will remember it. He had started work the day beforehand, his first job, you know, he was at St. Joe's, had left St. Joe's, and uh, he, he, he had started work. His first pay packet he had in his pocket when he was cut down. These are little ordinary things that ordinary people have or enjoy or at least experience and there's nothing much to be said about them. And had a bullet not struck him, there would be nothing much to be said about Manus Deary having a comic in his back pocket and a bag of chips from the Scooby-Doo when a bullet struck him. And we should remember those things, it's not there's no great sort of roll of drums or anything happens sort of when that type of event takes place, comes out of nowhere a bullet shattering the skull and shattering the brains and taking away the life of young people. We should remember that. Sometimes children are forgotten. Young people are forgotten. And many of us remember, I only discovered this quite recently, 40 children under the age of 16 died in Easter week in Dublin. Why don't we know that? Why don't we know that? Because they might kill by pursuing any cause that can be remembered or regarded as heroic. Because they were killed for no reason. Nobody remembers, generally speaking, nobody remembers those who died for no reason. So it's absolutely right that there should be this garden here. They remember not just Manus, but as Helm has said, they remember all the children in this area whose lives have been taken from them in the course of the troubles. And we should, when we stand in silence, or even sort of when we walk by in the noise of traffic and so on, every time we walk by here, I hope in the future that the thought will enter our minds that here is a, rem a memorial to the innocent victims of the trouble, never more innocent than these people. And if there's, I think this garden very appropriate, as Bishop Dolo said, you know, it's right in the heart of the community. It's not on a big plinth. There's nothing grand about it, and there won't be anything grand about it if hell has her way. It's an ordinary patch of grass in the bog side. It's now become hallowed ground. 